So we now start on, on um, Manual for Teachers, Section 15. And this is such an interesting subject. I mean, if you think about the basis of Christianity is all based on, on, on a judging God and the, and the final judgment and either you go to heaven or hell. So if you look at all fear-based religion, the dualistic fear-based religion, it's all based on making sure that you prepare for the end. The end is near. You know, the whole chapter of Revelations is all about the final judgment. And, of course, it's from a duality point of my view. It's God up there watching you. Hopefully today he's uh, using a tablet and not uh, a clay tablet, a, uh, an apple tablet as opposed to a clay one. And uh, you can now compute all 8 billion of us and, and keep tabs on everybody and make sure that you've been a good girl or a good boy. And then he passes, you know, hopefully the Wi-Fi is working and he can pass it down to the big gate, the pearly gate. And when you arrive, St. Peter can just look up your initials and there you are and go, okay, you got 20 good points and minus 700 bad points straight to hell. Don't pass, go. Don't collect $200. The end. And, uh, you know, you've been judged because you've been evil. And that's what most religion is based on. It's good and bad, you know, right and wrong, good and evil. And the judgment is God's final judgment because you've been a bad boy and you didn't go to church. You didn't know the Ten Commandments. And, uh, I mean, I remember a Catholic priest once saying to me, when you get to the pearly gates, you're going to have to recite every single chapter, every single chapter that the index of the Bible, and if you don't have it right, you're going to go straight to hell. It's the best you learn. Them. Can you imagine? You know, John, Peter, Paul, Luke, you know, and Ringo Starr. Um, so it's such a confusing idea, the final judgment, and yet the course is so clear and so simple. Is each one going to be judged in the end? So the final judgment, yes, indeed. So yes, there is going to be a final judgment. No one can escape God's final judgment. I feel like I'm on a pulpit right now and I should slam my fist, okay? Who could flee forever from the truth, but the final judgment will not come until it's no longer associated with fear. So that's it. So the final judgment cannot be associated to fear. That explains it all. One day, each one will welcome it. So you will actually welcome it. Now, if you have this idea that you're bad and you're a sinner and you're full of guilt, you don't welcome it. Okay. And on that day, it will be given him. He will hear his sinlessness proclaimed around and around the world, setting it free as God's final judgment on him is received. This is the judgment in which salvation lies. So it's not a judgment of condemnation. It's a judgment which proclaims your salvation. This is the judgment that will set you free. This is the judgment in which all things are freed with them. So this is alluding to all things are freed with me. How does that work? You're the dreamer dreaming up the entire universe. Time pauses as eternity comes near. And silence across the world and silences and silence lies across the world that everyone may hear this judgment on the son of God, you holy are you eternal, free and whole at peace forever in the heart of God. So where is the world and where is sorrow now? So this is the son of God has been set free. The prodigal son has returned in his awareness to the realization is never left. Is this your judgment of yourself, teacher of God? Do you believe that this is holy truth? Do you believe, do you truly believe that you've done nothing wrong? Do you truly know you have no guilt because you're simply dreaming? And no matter what mistakes you make during the day, no matter bad things you do, no matter how many times you lose your temper because the ego attacked you and you reacted, of course, the ego attacked you through people, places, things, and events, especially the special love relationships. No, not yet, not yet. But this is still your goal and why you are here, why you are here and why you will reincarnate if you don't get it right. But don't be in a hurry. Script is written. It is your function to prepare yourself to hear this judgment. And here's the important part. 
and recognize that it is true. This is the knowing of oneself, not the belief concept idea, but the knowing. And this is why the self-inquiry process is so important so that when you investigate, go within, not without, you realize the son of God is the self. One instant of complete belief in this. And you will go beyond belief, to here it is, to certainty, and it's capitalized. One instant out of time can bring time's end, holy instant. Judge not for you, but judge yourself, and thus delay this final judgment. And in the Bible, it says, as a man judges, so he shall be judged. And of course, the immediate assumption, dualistic mind, is by God. And yet, how simple is this? Whatever your judgments are, whatever your judgments are, since you perceive and project, your judgments of yourself become the judgments of the world. But because you try and minimize the guilt and maximize the pleasure, you project the guilt outwards. So your judgments are judgments projected into the world. And how you judge the world is how you judge yourself. So on a very simple way of looking at this, imagine you don't, you're unhappy with your weight. So you look in the mirror and you're not very happy. You've got a, bit, a couple of little happy Pirelli tires around the waist. And what happens when you see someone who's a little overweight or someone who's overweight? You go, oh, look at that fat person, that fat bastard. Okay, why? It's your unhappiness with, your th with yourself. And so you're constantly comparing and projecting outwards. As a man judges himself, he judges the world. And as he judges the world, he judges himself. Of course, that was seen as God judges. Judge not, for you but judge yourself, and thus delay this final judgment. What is your judgment of the world, teacher of God? Have you yet learned to stand aside and hear the voice of judgment in yourself? Voice of judgment, Holy Spirit. Or do you still attempt to take this role from him, capital H? Learn to be quiet, be still and know I am. For his voice is heard in stillness. And it's not an external voice. It's just an inner knowing. So when people say to you, yeah, but I hear Jesus talking to me. Talk shit. Talk absolute nonsense. Okay? When you hear Jesus talk to you, it's an inner voice. Even Helen heard an inner voice. It's not an outer voice. If you're hearing a voice outside yourself, you're schizophrenic. Go see a doctor. Go take those little pills. Okay? And meditate off it. And that sounds like a judgment, and it is. Okay, enjoy it. And his judgment comes to all who stand aside in quiet listening and wait for him. Okay, it's just an inner knowing. And people that make themselves special believe in magic. And look at me, I'm special and I'm, I'm psychic. They tell you that they hear these voices and the voices of Zork from the planet Zeus and the fourth level of the ninth whatever. That magic stuff, leave and walk away. Holy Spirit is your Holy Spirit, therefore your inner most high voice. It's your highest self. What is your highest self means? It's the part of you that is most aware of the Christ mind. What is the Christ mind? The awakened part of the Son of God's mind. And it's not outside you or in Jesus or in Christ, something out there. It's you fully awake to self fully aware you are the love of God, the extension of God, and therefore you are that which is, an extension of that. And that means that you cannot be judged to the point that you will be destroyed. You who sometimes sad and sometimes angry, who sometimes feel your just, is, your just you is not given to you and your best efforts meet with lack of appreciation and even contempt, give up these foolish thoughts. They are too small and meaningless to occupy your holy mind an instant longer. God's judgment waits for you to set you free. What can the world hold out to you, regardless of your judgment on its gifts, that you would rather have? Okay? So what would you really, do you want to hang on to these judgments or would you rather let them go? It's basically what it's saying to you. Is, aren't, don't you want to be free of your own judgmental way of looking at the world? Well, if you do, whenever a judgment comes up and you become aware of it because you've asked to be aware of it, you are asked the ego thought system and, and ideas to come to the surface, then ask for help. Choose to see it again. Holy Spirit, 
Show me another way. Choose right-mindedness. Choose not to judge. You will be judged and judged in fairness and honesty. There is no deceit in God. His promises are sure. Only remember that. His promises have guaranteed his judgment. And his alone will be accepted in the end. And what is his judgment? You are my son. You are perfect. You are free. You are unchanged. It is your function to make that end be soon. And don't wait for yourself to die to realize I'm dreaming this isn't real. And be vigilant and dedicate. And then we will de de it's coming up shortly. You know, how should a teacher of God dedic dedicate his day or spend his day? Make time for God. Make time for dedication. And don't tell me you're too busy. I run a multinational, you know, I ran multinational companies and massive companies with hundreds of staff, thousands of staff members, you know, and I have an 18-hour work day, blah, 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 and I still can make three hours a day for God. Three hours every morning. I get up super early every morning, and yes, it's very difficult for 21 days, and you get in the habit, and then it just becomes, you can't, it, don't get into routine without, without awakening, but when you get into the habit of dedicating time for source, your tithing, You'd be surprised how it comes back at you. Okay. It is your function to hold it, to hold it to your heart and offer it to all the world to keep it safe. So will you be judged in the end? Absolutely. But the judgment is holy are you, eternal, free, and whole, and peace forever in the heart of God. Remember this. So remember this that you don't turn on yourself and get angry with yourself and 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 want to. You know, you've done something wrong. You, you weren't vigilant. You, you didn't catch a thought. You reacted. You got angry. You get home. You realize, oh, my goodness, I was cruel. Or I shouted at that kid on the elevator. Or I was rude in traffic. Or I, I was mean to the secretary. Or whatever the case was. And then you beat yourself up. Nothing stops you. Little text saying, I'm sorry, I, was over, I overreacted today. Um, and if you're not going to see that kid again because he was a stranger on the, on the, in the in elevator, and you, know, you, you won't see him again. Just, just hold him in your mind. It's all mine anyway. And so I'm sorry. I was just sad. And then let it go. Don't carry it. Because then the ego traps you a second time. It traps you with guilt. Remember, that's the ego's plan is to trap you with guilt. And as I mentioned, so this is such an important part. How should a teacher, the teacher of God spend his day? If you truly want to believe in that, in, in, in section 15, that the final judgment is that you are not judged and, if, and you're only being judged temporarily in illusion by yourself. If you really want to get to this, accelerate this and know this and know that the moment you shut your eyes, that you have no attachment to this world anymore, no attachment to a single person anymore, love for all equally, no special love relationship, no desire for conquest in this world, no desire for labels, or whatever the case, it's simply to serve. If that's what you really want, in other words, seek ye the first, the kingdom of heaven, and all else shall be given you, how should you spend your day? To the advanced teacher of God, this question is meaningless. Because to the advanced teacher of God, you can spend your day however you want to. There's no right and wrong way. And it's certainly not asking you to shave your head and put on a purple, orange, green, and, purple, and, and blue robe, you know, um, Joseph's technicolor dream coat and go and sit under the Bodhi tree and face east and hum all day long and, and hum at the eighth octave of the Om and devotion. Life is meditation. Meditation is not something you do. It's something that is permanent. It's the awareness of being aware. What is the purpose of practicing meditation is bringing the awareness of what you are into your awareness. Now that you're aware, stay aware and pour yourself into the world. There is no program for the lessons change each day. The script is written, yet the teacher of God is sure, but of one thing, they do not change at random. What you're projecting is your perception and it comes back at you. Seeing this and understanding that it is true, he rests content. He will be told all that his role should be silently. And that's why you've got to make time for silence. This day and every other day. And those who share that role with him will find him.
so they can learn the lesson for the day together. And you that may be watching YouTube for the first time and watching me, you found me because you're meant to, or you found me because you're not meant. In other words, you listen to this and you go, you know what, this guy's absolutely batshit crazy. You know, a teacher for God should be holy and never say the word fuck. And this is not for me. Let me go and listen to David Hofmeister. Go listen to David. He's gentle, he's kind, he's sincere. And he's for those people who have that predisposition. If you want another great mind, you want a super intellect, um, there's, you know, Rupert Spira. Go listen to him. He's not a Course in Miracles teacher, but he teaches the same principle. Okay. So you'll be told and you'll find it. You'll find the right teacher for you. If there's a bit of a rogue in you, you found me. Why? Because I'm a little irreverent and perhaps that's still the personality and most definitely it's a little ego still playing through because while I still have breath and while I'm undoing this, the ego is still here. Not in control anymore. The ego is definitely not in control anymore. But it still pops in and it requires constant vigilance. And I teach in order to overcome the urge, the continuous mind attack, which is ego is an active attack thought system. No one is absent whom he needs. Not one is sent without a learning goal already set and one which can be learned that very day. For the advanced teacher of God, then the question is superfluous. It has been asked and answered. It's however it's meant to be. Surrender and let him lead the way. And he keeps in constant contact with the capital A answer. In other words, the voice for God. He is set in the voice for God, Holy Spirit, is the memory of God in you. He is set and sees the road on which he walks stretched surely and smoothly before him. And the road is right here now. There's no destiny. The destiny is just the sinking into the heart where the self is made known, where the self resides in the temple, the heart, the temple, symbolic. What is the temple? What is the heart? It's that which remembers itself lovingly, knowingly, it remembers its essential nature, its essence, the essence, which is the essence of its source. It's the extension of source is the self we are. Temporarily, we forgot as we've looked outwards, projected and perceived, perceived and projected. We're now turning inwards. We're letting go of our perception and our projection and returning to self. But what about those who have not yet reached the certainty? They are not yet ready for such lack of structuring on their own part. What must they do to give up, to give the day to God? Well, start by dedicating. Wake up in the morning. I give this day to you. First prayer. And remember, when you wake up in the morning, the minute you open your eyes, ego attack thoughts come. Ego always speaks first. And as soon as you open your eyes and as soon as your brain kicks in, ego attack thoughts start. There are some general rules which do apply, although each one must learn them at be as best as he can in his own way. Routines are such a dangerous, as I mentioned earlier, because they are easy, they easily become idols, gods, okay, become magic. You have to do it in a certain way, face a certain way, you know. So be careful that you don't turn it into magic. Let it be a natural desire to de be devoted, to share, to, to give that time to God, okay. And so they easily become gods in their own right, threatening the very goals for which they were set up. And this is why do not turn this into a religion. Do not turn this into a church. The course is very, very clear. Do not turn this into a cult or a religion. The course is meant to be a self-process. Of course, here we are listening to me in a group. But this is sharing. This is We don't sign up, become a group, and don't get into debate. Don't get into arguments. And, and because course is... Like Gyani, the, the, the yoga of Gyani, the, the yoga of the intellect, the path through understanding. The course is a path through understanding, and you don't have to highly intellectualize. Forgiveness doesn't require high intellectuality. All it requires is the knowing and the willingness. This is really what God is asking. I will to will, thy will. Okay. And so it says there, broadly speaking, then it can be said that it is well to start the day right. So how do you do this? Just start. Acknowledgement of, if, you know, if Jesus is still your symbolic Christ mind, give the day to Jesus. 
have the conversation with Jesus. If you realize Jesus as Christ, have the conversation with Christ Jesus. Have the conversation with God's Holy Spirit symbolically. But at some stage, you'll come into the realization with the Christ mind, the, the, the Jesus, the Holy Spirit, all collapse into the oneness of self. Where's the conversation now? With your highest self. What's your higher self? Your highest awareness. What's having a conversation? Well, it's the ego wanting to undo itself in order to become happier. Where is the call coming from? From within. The higher self, the Holy Spirit, higher son of God self calls the fractured self because the fractured self has had enough of itself. Of course, it doesn't want to die, but it's hoping to find a better way to be happy. And so it goes inwards. And what happens when it when, when the shadow comes closer, because what is the physical body mind? A shadow. And what happens to the shadow body mind when it comes closer to the light, the temple, the ray of light, the memory of God? The shadow disappears. What is left? The knowing of one's being, the Christ mind, the right mindedness. You as the observer have now chosen away from ego, away from the secret dream of guilt, fear, and sin. You've chosen right mindedness. It is always possible to begin again. And so whether you have an episode during the day or at night, would it start again? Just choose again, choose anew. Time is on a loop. Should the day begin with error? Yet there are obvious advantages in terms of saving time. And for me, I've dedicated my early mornings when it's the quietest. And yes, it's perhaps easier for me because I don't have a family and there's no kids and there's no spouse in the house and I wake up, cats don't talk and, you know, I can make a double espresso and light up a cigarette and open the course and just sit quietly. And then I blog, I take the course and I put it into PowerPoint and I put it onto Facebook and I put it onto YouTube and here we are listening to me. And I just sit and contemplate and, and have the internal conversation with the Christ mind, the Holy Spirit the memory. And I started this, as I mentioned before, 15 years ago. And I used to get into the car and it would just be a war zone all the way back to the, you know, to the office, 60 kilometers away. And today I get in the car and it's just... Driving is a meditation. I look forward to the drive. Where, where did that anger go? Where did that frustration go? Where did that road rage go? What happened to the rogue? The humor is still there, but what happened to the rogue? What happened to the aggression? It just disappeared. Why? Because I started my day this way. So those of you that struggle with yourselves, with your anger, with your suppressed emotions, passive aggressive behavior, start your day this way and Take it from someone who was never happy, that it's changed my life. At the beginning, it is wise to think in terms of time. This is by no means the ultimate criterion, but at the outset, it's probably the simplest to observe. So dedicate the morning, maybe a little bit at lunchtime. The saving of time is an essential early emphasis, which although it remains important throughout the learning process, becomes less and less emphasized. At the outset, we can safely say that time devoted to starting the day right does indeed save time, but certainly it saves all that emotion, all that uh, unhappy with self emotion. How much time should be spent? This must depend on the teacher of God himself. He cannot claim that, that title until he has gone through the workbook since we are learning within the framework of the course. After completion of the more structured practice periods, which the workbook contains, individual needs become their chief consideration. This course is always practical. It's a very simple course, but yes, it isn't easy. Why? Because it really requires you to look at yourself, allow that ego Ideas in the, in the sense of sensations, feelings, emotions, thoughts. Of course, everything's a thought. Thought attached to sensations and feelings. Ideas and judgments to come to the surface. Historic, the past brought into the present. Pain, abuse, anger, 
hurt, bring to the surface, investigate. To whom is this appearing? Who's observing this? To who did this appear? Where's, the, where's these past painful thoughts? If I investigate, if I look at them, they're a memory. Invest, find the memory. It's in the mind. Find the mind. It's just a cluster of thoughts. Find the thoughts. They're just ideas. Find the ideas. Nothing. So what's observing all of this? That which forgot itself and moved forward, outward, from this observer place into the projection with the subconscious hidden, hidden guilt of the hidden dream, the hidden dream of fear, guilt, and, and suffering and pain. And guess what? We've created it. We have created the illusion, the world, the illusion of bodies, that bodies come to die and bodies can be threatened and bodies can hurt one another. What is that? That's the secret guilt projected into the world. What we see, what we look upon is guilt. And therefore, what we're looking at is either a cry for love or an action of love. And when will you see love at play? When the Holy Spirit uses those devices, those bodies, whatever the situation and circumstances to call us. So it all depends on the teacher. This course is always practical. Always. And if you, and if you pay close attention, your vigilance, you'll realize no coincidence, no such thing. Because... You have a thought and someone else pops up. Wow, how did that happen? There's one dreamer. There's a single dreamer dreaming the whole thing. So all the activities, the characters in the dream, especially those of proximity mindset, birds of a feather flock together, are going to experience the same thought idea process at the same time. Just like the world has experienced COVID at the same time. Why? Somewhere deep inside our suppressed guilt-ridden dream. There was the idea, the world's overpopulated, there's too many people, we need people to die because we're dying. And just that concept has then become, of course, there was hands at play, but the hands at play, thoughts at play. And what were the thoughts at play? The virus was the thoughts at play. And that's it. Now you have, you have a pandemic. Why? Because the mind has fallen so deep into despair that it wants to kill itself in some way or another. This course is always practical. It may be that the teacher of God is not in a situation that fosters quiet thought as he awakens. Maybe you've got kids, you know, maybe your wife wants to talk in the morning, your spouse, your husband, you know, maybe you've got to go to work. Maybe you have to listen to the news so you get ready for the day. If this is so, let him but remember that he chooses to spend time with God as soon as possible. And let him do so. Duration is not the major concern. One can easily sit an hour with closed eyes and accomplish nothing. As do most yogis that practice meditation. You see these people, they go to the gyms, they practice meditation, they sit for an hour. As soon as the session is over, yep, 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 yep. No quietness inside. And then they go and have their smoothies in their, in their fashion outfits and get into their fashionable cars and drive off. And what was meditation? It's a photo opportunity. So we can paste it on, post it on Facebook. Look at me. I'm spiritual. I'm meditating. Yes, it's a judgment. It's an observation too. Duration is not, duration and the place and the sunset, it's not necessary. You are meditation. You are contemplation. Contemplate. Converse. Speak to your father within you. One can as easily give God only an instant. And in that instant, join with him completely, but to give it completely. Perhaps the one generalization that can be made is this. As soon as possible after waking, take your quiet time. Continue a minute or two after you began. You begin to find it difficult. So the minute you start a struggle, just a few more minutes, make an effort. Dedicate, ask for help. You may find that the difficulty will diminish. In actual fact, you'll definitely find that the difficulty will diminish and drop away. Ask for help. If not, that is the time to stop, go about your day, and whenever you can find time for break, a quick bathroom break, sit quietly, dedicate that moment, acknowledge the presence of the divine in your life. You've never left. The same time procedures 
should be followed at night. And try not to go and lie down and think of God. Just, hey, just as a kid, kneel next to your bed, just dedicate. I know it's symbolic, just a moment. Kneel next to your bed and just dedicate. Try it. It's just devotion. Do the devotion. Hey, and if your date doesn't think it's very cool and she thinks you're crazy, well, you know, that'd be cool. <laughs> Maybe you start a trend. Perhaps your quiet time should be fairly early in the evening. If it's not feasible for you to take it just before going to sleep, it is not wise to lie down for it. It is better to sit up in whatever position you prefer. Having gone through the work workbook, you must come to some conclusions in this respect. If possible, however, just before going to sleep is desirable. It's a desirable time to devote to God. It sets your mind into a pattern of rest and orients you away from fear. I love to say that final prayer, lesson 365, this holy instant, I give to you, be you in charge that I may follow you, certain that in your direction, I will find peace. That's it. End my day that way, begin my day that way. If it is expedient to spend this time earlier, at least be sure that you do not forget for a brief period, not more than a moment, will do in which you close your eyes and think of God. Remember, God is not an object. God is not a being. It's just be present in that awareness. Just acknowledge. There is one thought in particular that should be remembered throughout the day. It is a thought of pure joy, a thought of peace, a thought of limitless release, limitless because all things are freed within it. You think you made a place of safety for yourself. You think you made a power that can save you from all the fearful things you see in dreams. It is not so. Your safety lies not there. What you give up is merely the illusion or protecting illusion. And it is this that you fear, and only this. How foolish and, and to be so afraid of nothing, nothing at all. Your defenses will not work, but you are not in danger. You have no need of them. Recognize this, and they will disappear. And only then will you accept your real protection. How simple and how easily does time slip by for the teacher of God who has accepted his protection? And remember, it's always with you. There's nowhere a time where you're outside God. There's nowhere a time where you're not protected. It's just the acknowledgement that you are that is the protection itself. All that he did before in the name of safety no longer interests him. Think of all the crazy things we do, you know, from you know, protecting ourselves with guns and whatever else we do in certain countries to retirement plans and annuities and the hope that will, and what, what guarantee have we got of safety in the future? For he is safe and knows it to be so. He has a guide, capital G, who will not fail. He need make no distinctions amongst the, the problems he perceives. And there's no order of difficulty in miracles. For he whom he turns with all of them recognizes no order of difficulty in resolving them. He is as safe in the present as he was before illusions were accepted into his mind for while he was in God in full awareness. And as he will be when he has let them go, there is no difference in his state at different times and at different places because they are all one to God. In this is your safety. And he has no need for more than this. There will be temptation along the way often okay every day the teacher of god has yet to travel and he has need of reminding himself throughout the day of his protection how can he do this particularly during a time when his mind is occupied with external things he can but try and his success depends on his conviction that he will succeed there has to be a knowing and the knowing is the willingness to to know he must be sure success is not of him. So you don't succeed because of yourself. You succeed because God's Holy Spirit 
has willed to will God's will for you. There are times where certainty will waver. And the instant this occurs, you will return to earlier attempts to place reliance on yourself alone. We do this all the time. Don't beat yourself up when you do that. Let it go. Practice forgiveness on self and choose again. Ask Holy Spirit, show me a new, show me another way to see this. Forget not this, in this forget not, forget not this is magic, and magic is a sorry substitute for, a, for true assistance. So let me step back because I've missed a line. There are times when uncertainty will waver, and the instant this occurs, he will return to early attempts to place reliance on himself alone. And it's the reliance on ourselves and external magics and external and external things and places and people and objects to protect ourselves. That is all magic. True protection is the miracle. Miracle is God's Holy Spirit, knowing we've never left God and therefore nothing can harm us. I'm not a body. I'm free. I'm still as God created me. Magic is the belief that things outside us that we've created, the idea, the illusion of power will protect us. So forget not, everything we do is magic. And magic is a sorry substitute for true assistance. It is not good enough for God's teachers because it is not good enough for God's son. And who's God's son? God's son is you, the teachers for God. And that means everyone in this world. The avoidance of magic is the avoidance of temptation. For all temptation is nothing more than the attempt to substitute another will for God's. These attempts may indeed seem frightening, but they are merely pathetic. They can have no effect, neither good nor bad, neither rewarding nor demanding sacrifice, healing or dest destructive, quiet, nor destructive, quietening nor fearful. When all magic is recognized as merely nothing, the teacher of God has reached the most advanced state. All intermediate lessons will but lead to this and bring this goal nearer to recognition. For magic of any kind in all its forms simply does nothing. Its powerlessness is the reason it can be so easily escaped. It has no effects and can hardly terrify. And if you think back of your whole life, you spent your whole life relying on magic. Whether it was man-made things or things that you built around you, or the occult things and the tarot and the future cards, the future angel cards, and thinking that you could protect yourself in the future if you knew the outcome and all the strategies you built and all the educations you've and qualifications you've built around yourself so that you could make yourself more powerful, you know, and, and people would need you and need your services and you'd be taken care of because you'd be able to provide for yourself and your family. And then you get a COVID-19 and the whole thing just falls apart and shows you you cannot rely on any of these external magic things. But what you can know for a fact is you've never left God. And if you allow yourself to resonate in alignment with the frequency that you are always protected because you are still in God, that experience will, be made, will make itself known to you, through you, as you, and you will know this. And the minute you resonate in that knowing, you attract law of attraction is still always at place because it's the law of one and it exists in God's mind. It's an immutable law of God. What is given one is given all. And what is given all is the sure and steadfast protection that you are God's holy son, forever safe, forever unchanged, forever in him. There is no substitute for the will of God. In the simple statement, it is to this fact that the teacher of God devotes his day. Each substitute he may accept as real can but deceive him. But he is safe from all deception if he so decides. Perhaps he needs to remember, God is with me. I cannot be deceived. Perhaps he prefers other words or only one or none at all. Yet each temptation to accept magic as true must be abandoned through, this, through his recognition. Not that it is fearful, not that it is sinful. Not that it is dangerous, merely that it is meaningless, rooted in sacrifice and separation, two aspects of one error and no more. He merely chooses to give up all that he never had. And for the sacrifice is heaven restored to your awareness. And, and yes, many of these magic practices, I mean, think many people 
you know, got onto the spiritual path through tarot and angel cards and readings and psychic events and crossing overs and psychic phenomena, uh, you know, ghost stories or whatever it was, and then meditation and, and mushroom ceremonies and, you know, and yoga and tantra. And eventually you can let all that stuff go. And little pieces of money and little trinkets and little rocks that have been condensed and are shiny and little rings and savings accounts and annuities and homes. And you have no idea how any of that's going to turn out. And that doesn't mean that you don't plan and you don't plan for your retirement. Of course you do and you invest and you put your money away as wisely as you can so one day you can take care of yourself and you don't have to be reliant on anyone else. But you, you have no idea what's going to happen tomorrow. Look at how many worn, torn countries there are around the world. I'm sure all of those people in all those countries plan for their tomorrows too. But the one thing you can know is the real you, the real essence of what you are, your essence, your spirit, your soul, that self, which is the extension and activity of God's son's dreaming mind, which is you, returns to the, yourself, the observer, returns to itself, the dreaming son of God, returns into the ultimate self, the ultimate one consciousness, God. There you're definitely protected. No need for magic because it's you. It's for you, through you, as you. Is this not an exchange that you would gladly want? The world would gladly make it if it, if it knew it could be made. It is God's teachers who must teach that it can. And they must do so by example, not just regurgitating text. And so it is their function to make sure they have learned it. No risk is possible throughout the day except to put your trust in magic, things of the world, for it is only that that leads to pain. There is no will but God's, and this you need to always remember. God's will is done. You hope yours will be, and you'll know yours is when you will to will God's will for you. These teachers know that this is so, and have learned that everything is but this, but this is magic. All belief in magic is maintained by just one simple-minded illusion, that it works. All, th all through their training, every day and every hour and every minute and second, must God's teachers learn to recognize the forms of magic and perceive their meaningless. You've either got magic or you have miracle-mindedness. Fear is withdrawn with, from them. And so they go. And thus the gate of heaven is reopened within yourself, and its light can shine through you, as you, for you, for the rest of your creations of the world. Again, on an untroubled mind, it is all for you. We'll stop, we'll stop the share now, and we'll stop the recording now.